Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and another episode of SVG School where I'm showing you how to customise my layered SVGs into something extra special and bespoke for your pet. In this video I'm going to show you how to make brindle coloured dogs. Brindle is an absolutely beautiful colour of dog coat but it's one of the hardest to replicate in paper craft form because of all of the different colours and patterns that go inside it. I'll show you two separate ways to make a brindle effect for my layered dog SVGs. The first one uses alcohol markers, so I cut the design like normal from card and then colour it with alcohol markers to create the brindle effect. The second option uses a printed brindle pattern that I've designed to um, cut out some of the layers with, so you've got it lovely and printed on glossy photo paper. The brindle pattern is available from craftwithsarah.com for free or check the link in the description of this video to go to the download page. First we're going to start with the alcohol marker version. So let's see how this works once we've already cut out all the layers of the dog design. Now everything's cut out we can work on adding the brindle pattern using some alcohol markers. I'm using these ones, they are by Nuvo Studios and I've got three different packs of colours. Each one's got some browns and greys and things in that I'm going to use. Any kind of pens will do, so if you've just got regular felt tip pens they'll be fine or you can mix and match between different brands but what you want is a nice selection of around five to seven browns and greys in all different shades. And then we're just going to colour the solid layers in. So for the boxer there's three different layers we're going to colour. I've already done these two so you can see these have got the effect on them already and I'll just show you how to do it with the bottom layer. Now one thing to bear in mind is that you're not going to see all of this layer so I don't want to colour the whole thing in. When you put the next layer on top all you're actually going to see from this bottom layer is this piece in the leg here. So that's the only bit that I actually need to colour. Similarly for the next body layer, I've left the head as this is the main colour of my card because it's going to have other layers put on top of it. So there's no point colouring something you're not even going to see. So let's do this back leg. I've put a sheet of paper underneath just because as you can see I'm pretty messy with my colouring. I start with a kind of darker brown and I like these pens because they've got one side which is kind of slanted or chiselled so it makes it a lot quicker. And then with that chiselled edge I'm just kind of doing some wavy lines to be the kind of um, sort of almost tiger print stripes of that brindle. And then I'm just going to do the same thing with loads of different colours, just building it up all in different orientations and sizes and shapes. Just make it really random and you can take as much or as little time on this as you like. So I've done it quite quickly which gives a kind of abstract appearance you can see on this one. But if you wanted to, you could spend a lot more time to get a more realistic pattern. So I'm just going through and then filling in some more of that base paper colour on each go to build up the colours. I've got quite a dark brown here, so I think a little bit of that. It actually looks pretty similar to that one I put on first, so I won't do too much of that. I like to add some grey in there as well, it helps to kind of fill in the gaps a bit and gives that little bit of difference. So you see I'm being really, really rough with this and the nice thing about alcohol markers is the colours kind of blend together so it ends up looking really nice. I think just a little light bit, there's a bit of highlight in some places. And try to go over the edges a bit, just so that you're not going to get any of the base card showing. But there's that leg all done, so that was nice and quick. 
And you might be thinking that this doesn't look very pretty at the moment because it's very messy. However, once you put the next layers on, so it gives it that definition around the edges, it does start to look a lot neater. And it helps to blend your colours even more. So you can see how this is going to look with all of that pretty shading coming through to give the brindle appearance. I've also done the head here. And again, oh, I think that's around the wrong way. There we go. So once I've put the white stripe down the middle, you see the head's going to be there as well with all the different colours. So I'm really happy. I think this is going to look good. I'm going to stick everything together now and then I will move on to the third option which is using a printed brindle which is a photograph that I've taken and turned into a pattern. So I'll use print then cut on that one and then we can see all three next to each other to decide which one is our favourite. So that was how to make a brindle coloured dog using alcohol markers like this. Now let's see how to do it using a printed brindle pattern. There are two different ways that you can use the printed brindle pattern that I provide to cut out your dogs. The first way is by printing that printed pattern through your normal printer settings onto photo paper or card and then all you need to do is just put that on your Cricut mat and feed it into your Cricut like you would do for any other sheet of coloured card. This is my preferred way to do it because it means that you can make your dog as wide or as tall as your printer can actually print. The second way to do it is to use Cricut's print then cut feature, which is when you upload the brindle pattern into design space and then use that to fill in the shapes of the body of the dog in design space itself. There are benefits in that and that it saves you printer ink because instead of the first version where you're printing the whole square shape, all you need to print with this version is the exact shape of the dog that you're going to use. So there won't be any excess that you will have to throw away. So no wastage of printer ink. However, the reason that I don't like doing it this way is it does take a lot more effort to get the design ready to print. And also, it means you're limited to Cricut's print then cut size on the machine. So with the print then cut, you can only cut a maximum of 6.7 inches wide. And that is enough to cut most of my dogs. That should be fine, but obviously it does limit you. It is smaller than if you were just printing it out full size on your printer and then um, feeding that in with your Cricut and cutting it normally. I'm going to show you how to do both ways though so that you can make your own decision about which one you'd like to do. Here's how the downloaded pattern looks when you open it up on your computer. It comes in as a square and it will measure 8 by 8 inches. I'm on a Windows computer so I'm just showing this in the standard Windows kind of program that opens um, when you double click on the image to load it up. You can then print it using whatever printing program or graphics design program you want. I'll show you how to do it through this Windows program. So hit the little print icon on the top or you can right click and then press print. Then you'll get this little box come up. I've got my printer selected and then we've got let the app change my printing preferences which is on at the moment. I think that's okay to leave it as on. I want my orientation to be portrait. I will need two copies, but I'm going to print them one at a time just so I can make sure when it does the first one, I'm happy with it. My paper is A4, so that's all good. The paper type I'm using is glossy photo paper. And then under fit at the moment, it says fill page. So what this is going to do is it's going to stretch my square to fill the whole of the A4 sheet of paper. And if that's the effect that you want, that's absolutely fine. You can leave it like that. But because I know from experience that I'm not going to be able to fit both body shapes of the dog on one A4 piece of paper, I'm going to need two. I actually want to cut this at the original square. And also that means if I cut it square, it's not going to stretch the pattern like it's trying to do at the moment. So to make it do that, under fit, change back to shrink to fit, and then it'll go back to the original square. You have some white at the top and the bottom, but that is fine. 
You can change the margins if you want to or change how big it wants to print, but I quite like it full size so it goes all the way to the edge. Now if you can't do borderless printing, then you can tick this let the app change my printing preferences. And once that's off, then you'll see it doesn't quite go all the way to the edges of the paper. And that's actually what I chose. So this setting here is what I did when I went to print it out. Just before you print, there is one more thing to check. Go into more settings at the bottom and then scroll down to where it says paper type. In here, again, I'm gonna change it to glossy and your output quality, make sure that is set to high quality and that'll get you a much better print quality. If you just set it to normal, the colors won't be as vivid and it just won't look as good. So I wanna make sure that's on high quality. Then press OK, that's gonna wear away and think about it. And now I can click print and get that printed out on my printer. Whilst my design's printing, I can start rearranging the design and getting it ready to cut with my Cricut. This is my American Staffordshire Terrier design. And if I click it at the moment, I can see the width is 7.893 inches wide and 7.584 inches tall. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make it 7.75 inches wide. And that is the width of an A4 bit of paper that the Cricut will let you actually cut on. So because I'm printing A4, that is gonna be the perfect size for me. If you're putting this in a frame, obviously measure your frame first, make sure that this will fit in um, and you can make it smaller, of course, if you want to. Now looking at this, so all of this pale brown is what's going to be cut from the brindle pattern. And I just want to make a quick change to the head because at the moment, my brindle pattern will just be these little gaps in the ears. And I prefer to actually have the main face in the brindle design. So I'm going to switch these colors around. To do this, click color sync on the top right of the screen. This splits out all of the layers of the design and organizes it by color. So I can just take the dark brown face, click and drag it onto the light brown and then let go and it will change the color. And then do the same with the other head. So that one I'm gonna make the darker brown. So I've just switched these two around so that my main head will be cut from the brindle pattern. If you'd like to learn more about how to recolor my dog designs in Cricut Design Space, including much more in depth about how the color sync works, I have a whole separate video on that, which I will link in the description of this one if you'd like to find out more. Okay, so this is now ready for me to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and click make it. And at this point, you can click and drag your layers around to um, take up as little space as you can. So there's my white, my black is just the nose and the eyes. And then these are the patterned layers um, of brown by which I mean they've got the flower patterns in. So these intricate flower layers are the ones that I'm gonna cut from solid brown card, not my printed brindle pattern. I have A4 brown cards, so I'm gonna change this to A4 and just drag it around a bit so it fits a little better. This now means that this layer will be on a second piece of A4, but that is absolutely fine. The last color I have is the solid brown, and this is what I'm gonna be using my printed sheet for. So I need to change it to A4, and then it's on two mats, but because remember we cut an eight by eight inch square of the um, brindle pattern, that's the size that we printed. So we need to make sure everything will fit into that eight by eight. At the moment it won't because this head is down the bottom. So I can drag it to the top and then I'll have to move the body down a little bit so that it's not touching the head. Otherwise they'll overlap when they cut. And now if you just look at the grid lines, you can see that the body ends just before that eight inches and the ear is just touching that eight inch line as well. So that will cut absolutely fine. Make sure you don't rotate any of the layers at this point. For example, if I'd have done something like that to get the head to fit there, then it means when the pattern is cut, it will be at a different angle on the head than the body and it won't look right. So make sure you just keep everything at the rotation it automatically comes in on. 
I'm just going to check this one too and again that's on my 8 inch line and it's just before the 8 inches along the bottom so that will be absolutely fine too but hang on I'm going to show you one extra trick just to make perfectly extra super duper sure that it's going to cut the whole design from your printed paper and not cut any little bits off. Here's how my brindle pattern printed out and it's on glossy photo paper so it's got a lovely shine to it. To make this particular dog I'm going to need two sheets of it so I've already printed another one. And what I've done on this sheet is I've trimmed the edges of the A4 paper off but I've left a little border of white around the edge and I'll show you why I did that in a moment. Now it's time to go on my Cricut mat. I'm using a light blue mat and then this is important, make sure you line it up so that the pattern is in the direction you want it to appear on your dog. So I've got mine with the kind of stripe parts going down diagonally left, but if you want them to turn a different way, then just make sure you put it onto your mat that way because that's how it will cut. So the reason I put this little white along the edge is when you send something to your Cricut, you know it never quite lines up along this very edge, along the top or the side. There's a couple of millimetres space. So by adding that white in, I'm using up that millimetre space that the Cricut doesn't cut on with just empty white paper rather than wasting any of my brindle design and it also means that that brindle pattern will go just past my eight inches mark on my mat and that's good because that is what my design is going to fit so you can see i've got my eight inch line along the bottom and that is being covered by the pattern it's actually going a little bit further than that and the same on the top here's my eight inch and then I've got the pattern going down there. So now I know that because of how I lined this up in design space, it's going to cut, it's all going to fit, and it's gonna look really good. So now I just need to feed this into my Cricut machine to cut out that particular layer, and then I'll do the same with the other one. Because I'm using glossy photo paper, I'll probably cut this out as a medium cardstock setting with regular pressure. That tends to work well for me, but it might be a little bit different for you, depending on the thickness of your paper and the sharpness of your blade. So here's what the printed sheets look like when they've been cut out. I have cheated a little bit and I've already stuck the eyes on this bit just so I wouldn't lose them. But as you start adding the solid colour layers on top, which have the flowers on, you'll be able to see the brindle pattern through and it looks really pretty and realistic. So here's my other printed layer, which is the solid one that goes on top. And then I'll add the flowers on there so you can see that brindle pattern coming through and you've got the flowers as well, which adds a whole nother level of pattern. So I think this is going to look really effective when it's all stuck together. I'm going to pause the camera and stick it all together according to the assembly guide PDF that comes with the design. And then I'll show you how this one looks and compare it to the one with alcohol markers so you can see the difference. So here is the design all put together with all of the layers. You can see now it's got all of that 3D effect. And the brindle pattern shows through beautifully. Now if we compare this with the boxer dog pattern done with alcohol markers, you can see there is a difference. The printed one comes out a lot darker in the pattern than the coloured in one, but a lot of that is just because I chose quite a light brown to do my colouring on. If you chose a darker one then it would end up looking more like this. So these are two completely different options, but you can decide which one you think looks best. Let me know in the comments which one you enjoy the most. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make brindle coloured dogs in Cricut Design Space. Which one do you think was the most effective? Was it the alcohol markers or was it the printed version? Let me know in the comments which one you think looks more realistic. Join me again soon for another episode of SVG School. Thank you for watching. Bye.